there are plenty of page builders for you to choose from inside of WordPress. However, I think there is a clear winner when it comes to which one is the best, for both complete beginners and for web professionals. And it's probably not the one you think it is. Hi everyone, my name is Sam Harrison and I run a web design and development business based here in the UK. And whilst I'm a big fan of Webflow, I do regularly use WordPress for a decent chunk of my client work. And when I do, I tend to use this particular page builder when I do it. So I'll stop teasing, it's not Elementor, it's actually Bricks Builder. Bricks Builder is a WordPress theme and page builder kind of combined. And I think it's genuinely great for both complete beginners and for those who are more experienced. This Bricks Builder can be as simple or as complex as you would like it to be. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you on a guided tour of the interface. I'll talk a little bit about how it actually works, what can actually be achieved with it, and I'll try and convince you to give it a go. Incidentally, I'm actually in the process of recording a course about Bricks in collaboration with Flux. So if you're potentially interested in that, there'll be a link in the description below for you to sign up to the waiting list and we'll let you know when that course is actually ready. Okay, so let's jump on now and I'll give you a guided tour of Bricks Builder. Okay, so just before we get started sharing the interface, I want to just show you how to actually try Bricks for free for yourself. So if you just go to bricksbuilder.io, go all the way down to the bottom of the page, you'll see here it says, can I try Bricks first, which you can. Click on that. All you have to do from there is enter your email address and then you'll be sent basically a link to a WordPress playground where basically it's just a WordPress install, so you don't have to set this up yourself, which then gives you kind of a, a chance to actually try Bricks completely for free to see what you think of it. So give that a try. Okay, so I'll just go to my WordPress admin dashboard. We'll go over to our pages tab. I've got some pages set up here, so we'll just go on edit with Bricks for one of our pages, and this will show you the user interface of Bricks. So I'll just give you a basic guided tour of how things actually work. So like most page builders, you'll see here on the left-hand side, we have our different elements that you can then drag and drop onto the page however you want to. Again, I've just put on a couple of sections there, as you can see, and you can see whenever you do that and then you click on the section or the element that you've dragged on, you actually have some basic styling controls here on the left-hand side when you do that. So as you change to each one, you'll see you get a specialized styling panel for that particular element. If you want to further style it, just click on the style tab over here and you can affect, you know, your different layout styles, typography if you want to. But again, most of the time you have your, your basic styling on the left hand side as soon as you throw a particular element on. If you want to add more elements, you can do. Now there's quite a lot on here. Most of these you probably won't necessarily use, but there are some very useful stuff to have if you need them. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got a section with a container. Whenever you throw in a section on Bricks Builder, it has a container inside of it by default, which actually is, is pretty useful. So a section element is generally full width, and then a container inside of that is generally a maximum width of some nature. So it basically just stops your content going right the way from screen edge to edge. So that's pretty useful. If you actually want to set how much spacing that you actually want to have for these by default, you can actually do that as well. If you went over to your settings card here, you'll see you've got something called theme styles. So theme styles basically is a chance for you to set your style guide for the project. So let's say if you wanted to change the amount of padding you have in the section element by default, you can do that. If you go over to the element section here, you'll see what I've got set up currently is two rem of, of padding on the left and right, and then 12 rem above and below. If we were to change that, we can actually change that for every single section by default. And the same goes for containers, for divs, and whatever you want to do. So that's actually a really useful thing to actually have and actually just set up and then leave it. And then all of your typography, all of your heading styles, for example, you can set your sizing for headings by default. Very, very useful. So that's kind of a basic overview of the elements panel. All you have to do, just like most drag and drop builders, you can either just click on it or drag and drop a particular element onto the page. Super easy. And again, like I said before, this, this builder is, is actually probably more aimed at the more kind of experienced developer side of things. But I think if you're a complete beginner, creating basic structures is actually relatively straightforward. There's a few ways you can do it. So let's say you want to try and build some columns. Currently, we have a section and a container. Let's say this container, for example, you want it to be in maybe three columns. You do have an option here to click on this little icon. If you want to, you can then choose whatever kind of column type you want. So let's say you want it in thirds, you could do that. 
And like I said before, I think Briggs Builder, although he's probably aimed at the slightly more experienced developer side of things, I think if you're just getting started building websites, you'll actually find Bricks Builder relatively straightforward to get to grips with, I think. It's actually a bit more forgiving than something, say, like Webflow is, for example. So if you want to just create basic structures, I think it's pretty easy. You can do it in a few different ways because Bricks Builder does actually support Flexbox as well as CSS Grid. And let's say you didn't want to even bother with that, you could just click on the container here, and then you could click on this icon, and then you can choose your column type. So let's say you want to have three columns. There you go, you've got three columns. And it actually basically adds a div block inside for each one of them as well. If you want to add a little bit of spacing between them, just go over to your column gap or row gap, and enter in the amount of spacing that you want. And you can actually see, now I've done that, that we actually have a little bit of a gap between each of them. And then from there, you could then just enter in whatever kind of content that you actually want to by clicking on it. So super simple and super easy to get to grips with. So from there though, there is something that's worth mentioning. You can use classes with Bricks Builder just like you can with a tool like Webflow, for example. So if we add on a section element here, let's say we want to have this section to always have a dark background. What we could do is go over to our select tab here and then just go on section dash dark perhaps, and we'll give that a class. And then what we'll do is style this section to have a dark background. So we'll go into style, go on background, and we'll just choose a dark background color. Okay, so if you're not familiar with classes and how they work, basically it's a way of keeping your website consistent. So rather than actually starting each individual section with to be dark each time, so if I add another section, for example, what you wouldn't want to do is to then do the same kind of thing. You wouldn't want to go to your style here or background color and then make that dark. A much easier and better way is just to apply the class that we apply to this section to this one over here. So what I'll actually do is I'll, I'll, I'll duplicate one more section. So we've now got three different sections. Let's say we wanted to have the bottom section here dark as well. You'll see by default, sections are actually set to light. In your theme styles, you could actually set every section to be dark if you wanted to. Again, that's one option. But a better way here, let's say we wanted to have this section on the bottom to have a dark background color. Rather than individually styling it, all we'd have to do is make sure the section is selected. Go over to your select panel over here. And then I think we just called this, what do we call it? So it was section dark. Click on that and it will turn this one dark as well. So very, very useful. Again, if you're a Webflow user, this will be very, very familiar to you. So again, that's a basic look at how to actually structure things inside a Bricks Builder. There's actually a lot more to go into, which I might do on a separate video, but hopefully you kind of get the idea of how to actually structure basic things inside of the builder. It's actually relatively straightforward to do. I think most people, even beginners, would kind of grasp this relatively quickly. So a couple of the things I think I'd like to mention is the way this connects to ACF and custom post types. Okay, so I also mentioned that Bricks Builder supports Flex and CSS Grid. So, okay, so I also mentioned that Bricks Builder supports Flexbox and CSS Grid. So we've already looked at one way of creating columns, which is just by using this option here, which is again, a perfectly fine way to do it. This basically is using Flexbox to actually lay all this out. However, we can do the slightly different way as well. So let's show you CSS grid. So if we go on to our section, let's say we want to have a three column grid, we can do that. we will go on elements, we click on block. So block is basically a div block, which is set to flex. So it goes all the way uh, along like this. And what we'll do is we'll give this block a class of uh, three columns, basically. So we'll call it uh, grid three columns, which I think I might actually already have one on. You can see here, grid three columns, I've now applied that three column grid class. And you can see, once I've done that, it's actually applying that style for me. And if I wanted to now, I could just pop inside a div block. And you'll see we have one in here. If I want to then add content to it, I can do. So that's a heading, that's text, that's a button. And all I'd need to do from there is then just copy and paste that along two more times. And I've got kind of like a three column grid structure. And just like on most page builders, if you want to change the way this is actually laid out on different screen sizes, you can actually change this if you want to. So you'll see here, when we get to sort of mobile landscape, it starts to get a little bit cramped. So if you want to change the way this looks on different screen sizes, all you need to do is just change the, the way in which columns are actually stacking. 
So what we can do, if we go back to content here, okay, so one of the thing I want to mention about Briggs Build is that it has an integration with ACF or Advanced Custom Fields. So Advanced Custom Fields basically allows you to create what's called custom post types, which is basically like a database of templated items. So I've basically set up a kind of like a, a fake car dealership for this website. So if I go back to my admin here, I'll just show you where my current data for my vehicles is. So if I click on that, you'll see I've got various different vehicles with their brand, the model, and I have an image as well. What I can do is draw this data to the front end of the website. So it uses dynamic data within the builder. So if I go over to my pages tab here, we'll go to the front home page, which I've already set up. And what we will do is add a section in and start drawing some of that data into the front end of the website. So what I will do is I'll add in another section here. And then what we'll do is use CSS grid to lay these different columns out this time. So I've, I've actually previously set up a, a class for a three column grid. So on the container itself, what I'm going to do is apply my grid three column class. I'll click on that. And you'll see now this kind of appears here where I've got this kind of three column setup. What I'll also do is add in a block, which is basically a div block set to flex. And what I'll do now is add in some different elements. So I'll add in an image, I'll add in a heading, and I'll add some basic text as well. But on the actual block itself, what I will do is now use this, which is called query loop. And this lets us draw that data from the back end of the website to the front end. So if I click on that, you'll see now I have an option for query. I will click on that. I want the type to be post, so I'll click on post. And the post type is going to be vehicles, which is what I've already set up. So if I click on vehicles, you now see it will auto populate with the amount that I've actually already got on in my custom post types. I happen to have six. And what we can do now is draw that data to the front end of the website. So what I'm going to do is now select the dynamic data that I want from my custom post types. So I'll click on the little lightning bolt here. I'll go all the way to the bottom and then we'll choose the thumbnail image. And now you will see it's auto populating all of the images from my custom post type in WordPress to the front end in the builder. Again, if you use something like Framer or WordPress, sorry, uh, Framer or Webflow, this is the same kind of thing like collection items, for example. So what you can do from here is then style this however you want to. Just before I start styling anything, what I'll do is do the same with our text. So we want the heading to actually be the, uh, the brand of the car. So rather than just I am heading, we're going to go on to the little lightning bolt once again, go all the way to the bottom, and then we'll choose the brand of the car. And you'll see it's now pull that in. You actually have to make sure you delete the I am a heading option here. I'll get rid of it. And then you'll just be left with the title of the car. You might just need to get rid of the I am a heading text here, just so we're left with the title of the car. And you'll see it should automatically update, which it has done, which is great. Then underneath that, for the basic text, same sort of thing, just get rid of the text that's currently there. We'll click on our little lightning bolt, and this time we'll choose the model of the car, and you'll see it auto-populates it and creates this kind of uh, templated grid of all of our different items there. So super, super useful, and there's all sorts of things you can do with this. So this, this is the kind of thing you would use if you were making a website like a car dealership, or if you had like a real estate website, you, these could be houses, for example. And then what you could do is design a template for each individual listing that you have and kind of have it set up in such a way where you can then click through to it and see the individual car listing or all that data or the individual real estate house or whatever it is that you have. So that's a basic introduction to the Bricks Builder interface and how to actually build basic structures. So we've covered our elements panel and we've covered how to use ACF and actually how to get dynamic data onto the front end of the website. One thing I haven't touched on that much just yet is the mobile responses, but again, just like most page builders, what you can do is just change how things stack. So currently, in terms of what we have here, we have a three column grid. When it gets to mobile landscape, we probably don't want that. So you could just change that. So what we'll do is we'll type in one FR, one FR, which are fractional units. And now we've got just two of those. We've now got basically a two column grid. When we get to mobile, for example, maybe we want it just to be one now, what we can do is type in one FR, and there we go. We now have that different kind of layout for mobile view. But if we go back to our desktop view, you will see it still retains that sort of three column layout. 
So hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully you can sort of see how similar this is to you know, some other page builders like Webflow, like Framer, for example. I think it's just as easy to get to grips with and it's an extremely powerful tool that doesn't really have any limitations like some of those other tools I mentioned do. In terms of the amount of items that you can have, it's pretty much infinite. You can do as much as you want. And a big thing that WordPress page builders get kind of criticized for is their sort of page load speed. So what I am going to do is just show you how good this actually is. So I'm going to just duplicate this section a few times so we've got a bit more going on the page. Just so you, you can sort of see that there's more than just a, a title and image. What we'll do, click on save. And then we'll just view our page and we'll just get the URL from this. So you can see we've got you know quite a few images on this page. So we'll just take the URL and I will run a Google PageSpeed Insights test on it. Now again, I'm not a huge fan of obsessing over these scores, but just to show you how good this actually is, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at what score we get. It should be pretty good. I'm expecting definitely in the green for mobile and for desktop. So let's see what we get once it loads. And yeah, there we go. We've got a 95 score for mobile and probably 100, yeah, 100 for desktop, which is very, very good. I'm not even really doing any kind of optimization and we're still getting a very, very good score. Again, the importance of this is arguable, but again, it's nice that it is very well, nicely optimized. So hopefully that kind of gives you a taster of what using Bricks Build is actually like. There's a lot more to go into with this builder. I've only touched on sort of the absolute basics, but hopefully you can sort of see that it works in a very similar way to other page builders. You have your elements panel on the left hand side where you can drag and drop different structural things onto the page. You have then your different styling options in two different tabs here. Each time you click on a new item, you get specialized styling for that particular element, or you can then click over to your other style tab and alter things however you want to. On the right hand side, you have your kind of structured tree like you do in most builders. And we also touched on how to get dynamic data onto the front end of the website by using advanced custom fields. Okay, so that was a basic introduction to Bricks Builder. Let me know in the comments below if you liked it. Let me know what you think of it if, or if you'd like to see more content on this channel about Bricks Builder. And again, if you're interested in signing up to the waiting list for the course, you can do so in the link below. Okay, thank you for watching. I will see you on the next video.